Welcome everybody. K50 Black Shark 2 Cold Start. Now, um, this is not strictly by the book, um, but this will get you going and ready to take off. It's as simple as that. No, no weapons or anything else. This is just how to start the helicopter and have it fully running. So, um, let me move my seat to where it should be. First of all, there we go. Fly, and first things first, rotor brake over on the left-hand side. Switch it off. Our targeting computer switched on. Our uh, big iPad Abris computer thing switch on. Now these black switches, for the most part, if the um, switch is in the correct position, the, the uh, cover will be flushed. So open two battery covers, flip the batteries on, close the battery covers. Next, across to the fuel pumps. One, two, and the last one, three. Don't bother with these, these are for external fuel tanks. Then the fuel shutoffs, we're going to do both engines at once. Normally you do these one at a time. Uh, open, open, close, close, fuel pumps, or something, fuel shutoff valves. <laughs> Fire extinguisher, open, flick the switch up, close. APU to get the engine started, uh, flick the switch up, leave it open because we're going to shut that again later. Um, standby attitude indicator here, switch on. Engines, the EEGs for the engines, electronic engine governor, open, open, switches up, Clo oh. close, close. And then right over to the back here, the INU on the stabilization power thingy on the CMD power switch open on this one doesn't close all the way doesn't matter close the switch and then lastly down the bottom on the back here the one that's already open flick the switch down and then close the cover um, and we should be good well, now we've got a master warning flashing on the dashboard here Click that to go off. Now we're ready to go. At this point, normally you would shut the door so you don't hear all the engine, but I want you to hear the APU. Um, so down to our start panel here. So start at the top. Flick the start button. The APU will start spinning up, as indicated by the light over here. And you can hear it. It whooshes a couple of times, and when the whoosh gets all high, you know it's ready to go. There we go. So back down to our start panel. Engine selector left hand engine, switch to on, press the start button, open the uh, fuel cut off on the left hand side, look over here and our indicator shows that the engine's spinning up, engine number one is the numbers on the needle, engine number two that's not doing anything yet. We need that to get round to seven and a half and then uh, settle just below seven and a half and we know we're ready. At this point then we can put the radios on one, two, three, four, five, six. We can arm our ejector seat, this red and black switch here. One, oops, two, three, and then shut the ejector seat handle. Um, we can put our lights on, anti-collision on the left-hand side, blade tip lights, because they look cool, and then the interior lighting on. Now our first engine spun up, and engine selector again. Right hand engine, start button, fuel shut off, on, and watch for the springy needle, bounces into life, we need to get round to the 8. So now we just need to do some tidying up whilst this is getting running. Uh, our radar, radar atometer, move the needle to wherever you want it to be. I normally have it way low because I don't want to hear it ever going off. I know when I'm close to the ground, I don't fly at night. You can press the button to give it a quick test. It will show you the needle springing up. Um, down here by the stick on the bottom right-hand side, flick the switch up. That is the voice for the computer. Instead of just getting the message here, you'll get an audio uh, warning as well for anything that's going horribly, horribly wrong. But normally you'll know because of things on the floor and in flames. Um, our engines are spun up. So last thing to do here with the engines is these two yellow switches, you'll have a key bound to them, is uh, we bring it up until the stop. There's a little metal stop there. 
matrix on battery. That's it, now the engine's running in its automatic Not mode. Navigation system failure. Okay, now she gives you all these warnings because we don't have the generators running. So just next to the battery here, got generator, left generator, right generator, on, on, and all the rest of the systems in the, in the uh, helicopter will come up. Uh, last thing to do then, now that everything's running and the engine's running under its own steam, we flick our engine selector back to the centre position, APU shut off, there, turn off the APU fuel shut off, close the hatch, there you go, nice flush switches, and um, that's it for starting up the helicopter. Now, before we take off, we don't want to go spinning into the ground, um, so we need to have some navigation stuff going on. The nav master modes, put to operator, the data link master mode, wingman or commander, depending on who you're flying with, commander if you're on your own, wingman if you're with somebody else, and our data link power on, and most important of all, the three autopilots. See, all these are autopilot buttons for different directions. So we want the heading hold, which is left and right. We want the bank hold, which is the, um, the the tipping left and right of the helicopter. And we want the pitch hold, which is the nose up and down. We want all of those on. This altitude hold is will automatically come on when you choose hover mode, um, which you'll have set to a button as well. Now at this point, I will shut the doors and you can hear how much quieter and easier it would be to, um, it's not that much quieter to be honest, but um, that's it. Now, um, right control and enter brings up your little panel, shows you that the brakes are on. It doesn't matter if you don't turn those off, it just means it's not going to roll away once you put some power into it. Um, and uh, Oh, I forgot something here, the standby attitude indicator, roll the mouse wheel until the little flag goes away and uh, make sure the horizon's set on the center line with the orange line and the white line together. Um, this will probably break after about 20 minutes. Um, up on here, again, last bit of housekeeping, put the nav lights to 100%, put the rotor anti-ice on, and the uh, engine anti-ice or dust protection. We're in the desert, so we'll go down to dust protection. You get all these little indicators on here telling you what's going on. That is it, I hope this helped. And um, if it hasn't, I'm sure I can do another one at some point. <laughs> Thank you for watching.